Good morning. It worked on the first try. Um, hope you all are well today. Thank you for being here and worship with us. It's always a, an honor to share this time with you, and we're glad that you're here. Um, if you're visiting with us, a very special welcome to you. Thank you for joining us on Pentecost. It's a special Sunday, a uh, special day of worship here at First United Methodist Church. Um, if you all would find the registration pad in your pew, fill that out so that we know that you're here today. It's always a good way to celebrate your presence with us today. And we have just a couple of announcements. Um, first, immediately after the service in the CLC across the street, we're going to have a Sunday school assembly um, to kick off our new Enneagram study that will uh, occur during VBS um, on June 16th through the 19th in the evening and again in the evening um, August 5th through the 7th. So come and join us in the CLC to find out what that's all about. Hope that you'll do that. Um, and last announcement on June 16th through the 19th, like I just said, uh, we would love for you to register your young people for VBS. It's going to be a great, fun week for our, for our young ones. If you have neighbor kids, grandkids, your own kids, um, please sign them up. We would love for them to be with us this year. Um, that is it for the announcements this morning. Um, and we are, again, so happy, honored to be in worship with you today. And we come to worship with our hearts full of love, to welcome the Holy Spirit, to be together um, and to share grace and peace with one another. So the peace of Christ be with you. Would you please share Christ's love with one another. Before you're seated and before we begin worship, will you pray with me? Let's pray together. Gracious God, on this day that we celebrate the gift of your Holy Spirit, open us up to its presence today. May the Spirit speak to our hearts, and through our time together, may it guide us to a better way of living and to a life dedicated to sharing love and grace to one another and to the world. In Christ's name we pray. All God's people said, amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Welcome to First United Methodist Church. We begin worship this morning with the call to worship, followed by the hymn of praise, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, found on page 384 of the United Methodist Hymnal. Let us unite our voices as we worship. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I'm still alive. 
Let my praise be pleasing to him. Let my whole being bless the Lord. Come to our time of prayer this morning. I would draw your concern to your, your attention to the concerns that are listed in your bulletin. So those folks are always in need of prayer and ask that you would keep them in your hearts today and throughout this week and let them know that you are praying for them and keeping them in your prayers. Please join me in the call to prayer.
Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the miracle of a new day. We thank you for the miracle of the life that we share together, the miracles of shared love, of peace, and of healing. We thank you for your comfort in our difficult times, your grace in times of trouble, and your joy in times of celebration. And today, Lord, we especially give you thanks for your church. As we gather together in this sanctuary, help us recognize how miraculous it is to be called your people, how wonderful to be in a place where we can learn and grow and come closer to you and to one another through your presence and your example. As your Holy Spirit was gifted to us so we would stay connected and led by you, may we share the gifts of your love with the world around us. Though you've called us to love, there are times when we push away. You've called us to welcome, but there are times when we close our doors. You've called us to share the good news of your son, but there are times when we use your word as a weapon rather than as a tool of grace. You call us to work toward a better, more loving world, but there are times when we retreat into comfort at the expense of peace. Help us take away all the things that keep us from being the sort of church that you birthed through the coming of your Holy Spirit. Remind us how to love, how to welcome, how to share your story of grace and care, and may we live dedicated to the work of your kingdom on earth. May we live your call with fearless, loving hearts, and may our families, our neighbors, and our world see that we are your people through our love and our living after the example of your son who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Lead us not into the new bread, and we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from kingdom, and power, and the glory forever. Amen. From the second chapter of Joel, verses 28 through 31, we hear these words. After that, I will pour out my spirit upon everyone. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams and your young men will see visions. In those days, I will also pour out my spirit on the male and female slaves. I will give signs in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and columns of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and dreadful day of the Lord comes. But everyone who calls on the Lord's name will be saved. For on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, there will be security as the Lord has promised. And in Jerusalem, the Lord will summon those who survive. Offerings. I would remind you that we give in response to what we have been given. And I would also invite our young people to come forward just after our prayer of dedication for our children's moment with Miss Shannon. Let us give with grateful hearts. Chilean 
cool. Just a body, but not a soul. All around me look so shine. Ask my Lord if all was mine. Yes, every time I feel the spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Every time I feel the spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Ain't but one train on this track runs to heaven and runs right back. St. Peter waiting at the gate says, come on, sinner, don't be late. Yes, every time I feel the spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Oh, every time I feel the spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Let us pray. Gracious God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, make these gifts new again. We give out of thanks and love and pray that what is given may be received and used in a holy way, that the world may see you by how they are used. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. And our children are welcome to come forward at this time. Good morning. Come on. Come on down. I don't have any special flags for you to wave, but come on, come on. Hi, good morning. How are you? We got some coming from upstairs. Come on. Run down here. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> He's going to. How are you this morning? Good, good. Can I squeeze in here with you? Awesome. Are you having a good summer? Yeah. Have you been traveling anywhere? Has anybody been traveling anywhere? Where'd you travel to, Bristol? To St. Louis. Did you see the big arch? Yeah. And last summer they had a tornado going and everyone had to get out. Oh my goodness. I hope that doesn't happen to you. Did it, it didn't happen to you, did it? Okay, good. Good morning. How are you? Well, I just got back from a really big trip. Did you know that I went, I went with Miss Kathy and all these people who can sing really, really well, the big choir tour. It was amazing. Miss Kathy had us hooked up with these backpacks. Look at this. It was all empty. And then I came back with all this stuff. I've got my sunscreen in there. I've got all my, I got my hat. She gave us these really cool keychains every time. It was really, really neat. And we made some great memories. And so many things happened. And I would love to tell you all about them, but I can't, I don't have time. Have you ever felt like that? You've been on a great trip and you've had all these great experiences with these great big amount of people? That's sort of like what Pentecost is. It was this time, it's a story from the Bible. Can I tell you about it a little bit? Okay. So it's a story of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came to a big group of people. Well, that's what we were. We were a big group of people in two buses. We were all over the place. And amazing things happened, just like on our trip. Have, has that ever happened to you when you went on a trip? Like you said, you went to the arch and some amazing things happened? Yeah. Sometimes those things happen, and there's like all these feelings, like these stirrings inside you. You're like, what is that? Sometimes I think that's the Holy Spirit, and you're making people happy, and, and your face is like this the whole time. You ever been like that on a roller coaster? I think some of these people have felt like that too, but I, the whole time I was just like this, the whole time just smiling, except for one time. 
and I was so worried. I left my phone somewhere. We went to the World of Coke. I got this really cool shirt, and I was like, I can't find my phone. So I told some of the people with me. I did not run out without telling people where I was going. I said, I've got to go find my phone. And it was in Atlanta, and that's a big city. Have you ever been to Atlanta? It's a big city. You've been to Atlanta. You've lived there. It's big, isn't it? And there's lots of people there, different types of people. But I was like, I've got to find this phone. So I ran back to the world of Coke. My phone wasn't there. But the ladies were like, hey, we remember you. You were that big group of people. I was like, yeah, that was me. Well, we'll help you find it. Call us if, you, if we find it. Okay, okay. So then I ran back over, and the, these people kept stopping me. Three times people stopped me asking for directions. Well, I'm pretty good with directions in Atlanta because I've been there quite a bit. So I was telling them, you know, places to go. And then I stopped, and I was like, well, I'm just not going to find it. I walked back in to where we were, and there sat Miss Kathy, and she said, where have you been? I was like, oh, I think I've lost my phone. I can't find Lonnie, the bus driver. And she's like, let's just call him, see if it's there. Oh, it was on the bus. Oh, thank goodness. But he had drove off. And I was like, I don't know where my phone is. And so guess what? All those people I met, there was a reason, right? There was probably a reason for all of that. I was circling around Atlanta, and I couldn't find it. And finally, guess what? All these memories and all those things that happened, it was like, there's it is right there in my bag. But also, guess what was in that bag the whole time with all those people? It looks like a flower, but it's like this fire, this flame. It's this Holy Spirit that's with us the whole time. I wasn't scared at all. I knew I would find it somewhere, right? Yeah. Has that ever happened to you? Yeah. No, this is something new. We'll work on that today. You want to make one of these during Children's Church? Awesome. Okay, let's have a real quick little prayer. I'm so glad you're here. Ready? Dear Lord, thank you for bringing us together to celebrate the church. Amen. Here we go. You ready? Today's reading comes from the second chapter of Acts, verses 5 through 18. There were pious Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. When they heard this sound, a crowd gathered. They were mystified because everyone heard them speaking in their native languages. They were surprised and amazed, saying, Look, aren't all the people who are speaking Galileans, every one of them? How then can each of us hear them speaking in our native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, as well as residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the regions of Libya bordering Cyrene, and visitors from Rove, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the mighty works of God in our own languages. They were all surprised and bewildered. Some ask each other, what does this mean? Others jeered at them, saying, they're full of new wine. Peter stood with the other 11 apostles. He raised his voice and declared, Judeans and everyone living in Jerusalem, hear, know this, listen carefully to my words. These people aren't drunk, as you suspect. After all, it's only nine o'clock in the morning. Rather, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young will see visions. Your elders will dream dreams. Even upon my servants, men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy.
and from the book of Romans. So now there isn't any condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. God has done what was impossible for the law since it was weak because of selfishness. God condemns sin in the body by sending his own son to deal with sin in the same body as humans who are controlled by sin. He did this so that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us. Now the way we live is based on the spirit, not based on selfishness. People whose lives are based on selfishness think about selfish things. But people whose lives are based on the spirit think about things that are related to the spirit. The attitude that comes from selfishness leads to death, but the attitude that comes from the spirit leads to life and peace. So the attitude that comes from selfishness is hostile to God. It doesn't submit to God's law because it can't. People who are self-centered aren't able to please God. But you aren't self-centered. Instead, you are in the spirit, if in fact God's spirit lives in you. If anyone doesn't have the spirit of Christ, they don't belong to him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, good morning, beloved. You've already guessed the theme for worship today. How could you miss it with our liturgical dancers and our music? It's the Spirit of God. For the last seven weeks since Easter, the lectionary readings have pointed us to this promise of the Holy Spirit. And so today is known as Pentecost. Uh, many point to it as the birth of the church. It's the moment when there's this mass reception of the Spirit of God, just as the prophets promised. And so today we celebrate that. And so I, over the last several weeks in my sermons, I've been teaching and preaching about the Spirit. And you remember I said, it's among us. It's within us, 
and then it reverberates outwardly in ever-widening circles. And so today we celebrate that and focus on that in our sermon. So would you pray with me? Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Melt me, mold me, fill me, use me, Spirit of the living God, fall of fresh on me. Come, Holy Spirit, come. And though we are many, bind us together by the power of your Spirit. Bind us together in love. So that we may be part of your life, your divine love, as it radiates outward in ever widening circles. Come find your home in us, allow your spirit to abide in us, so that we may truly be the people of God. For this we hope and we pray in Christ's holy name. Amen. Think about where we see today people who are bound together in a sense of cohesion, of shared life, of shared identity, of shared purpose. Where are we seeing that? I think I see it this morning. But as we look at the world around us, somehow it's not unity that we're seeing, it's this incredible wave of disunity. And it's very troubling. And so we have to be the alternative to that. And so wherever you see unity, you certainly see the Spirit of God present and at work in some way. Or else there wouldn't be unity. But certainly where you see disunity, you're seeing the opposite of the presence and the power of God. And so how does that happen? I've been, over the last several weeks, been reading a book by Brene Brown. You may or may not be familiar with her. Uh, I first became familiar with her through uh, a TED Talk about vulnerability. And it, the TED Talk just went viral. Millions and millions of people have seen it. Um, Brene is a sociologist at the University of Houston. And so she is becoming more and more well-known. And she's written one of her newest books is titled Braving the Wilderness. And it's about belonging. You see, she's a sociologist, a researcher. So she studies, she gains, uh, gathers data. And so she's been studying belonging. 
even unity. How does that happen? She tells the story of the acts of the person uh, who started um, one of the sites that shares videos online. One of their most popular viewings, millions and millions of people have viewed this because it's so compelling, is a video of 95,000 people gathered into a soccer stadium, and most of them are fans of the Liverpool soccer team. And what's so incredibly captivating about this particular video is that as you scan the crowd, these are people from all walks of life, all stations of life, a very diverse crowd, but yet there is this moment of incredible unity, this bond that is created among soccer fans. And so the moment comes when they join arms and the banners are waving and they sing the team anthem. The team anthem is, you'll never walk alone. 95,000 people singing it together. And so in this book, Brene Brown uh, points to a sociologist, Emil Durkheim, who had a term for that, and I love the term, collective effervescence. Collective effervescence. I had to look up effervescence again. I thought of uh, those, you know, bubbles. What was it? Plop, plop, fizz, fizz. And that's what it means. But it's a shared enthusiasm. A bond of togetherness. And so, collective effervescence. If we were to, to describe what happened on Pentecost... That might be a contemporary phrase for describing it. Collective effervescence. What you shouldn't miss is that on Pentecost, the point of the story is that people from all over the world, the known world at that time, had gathered for this Jewish festival, basically celebrating the completion of the barley the gathering of barley, the harvest of barley, and the beginning of the wheat harvest. It was a major Jewish festival, and so pilgrims from all over the known world had gathered, and God bless Connie for reading that passage. Did you catch all of those names of all of those places? In that list, there are even bitter rivals who would never be in the same room with each other. But what happened is they gathered for this Jewish Pentecost, this harvest festival as the Torah required, and all of these diverse people came together, and then the vision of the prophets came into reality. That God would pour out God's Spirit on all people. It even said on both men and women, even on both male and female servants. All. And so over 3,000 pilgrims heard the message of the gospel. They were convicted of the message of the gospel. And they were bound together mysteriously. By this outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And so that's called the birth of the church, Pentecost. It was this moment of extraordinary unity. And only the Holy Spirit can unify in that way. Now we might have experiences of it like this, these soccer fans or you go to a UT Knoxville game or I don't know if Vanderbilt experiences collective effervescence or not. Maybe Ohio State, Michigan. You get a taste of it here and there, 
But when you really experience this being bound together in a mysterious way, very diverse people from all over, we are one in identity and purpose. That can only happen by the power of the Spirit. And that's what God envisions. And so unity is a common bond for the common good. And it's becoming so rare these days. Rather than converging together in this movement of God's Spirit that binds us together in love, the world around us seems like it's exploding outward, being torn apart. And so where do we see this being bound together in a very mysterious, mystical way? As I was thinking about that this week, it struck me that one of the places we see it in our culture today is in these experiences of the mass loss of life. Isn't that ironic? Otherwise, we seem to move in our own little tightly drawn circles, in our own tribes of people who are like us. But when these mass shootings happen, just watch. People are united in their tragic loss, in their unspeakable grief, and a bond is created. It's happened too, far too many times. We saw it maybe first in 9-11, but more recently in these school shootings or mass shootings. Newtown, Sandy Hook, Charleston. Now just listen to this list. Orlando, Las Vegas, Pittsburgh, Parkland, Florida, and now Virginia Beach. Watch what happens. Diverse groups of people are bound together in extraordinary loss. And there's a bond that's created. And so I would hope long before we have to face these tragic moments together that there would be an openness to the Spirit uniting us. Drawing us together, binding us together in love, and not just people who are like us, but an ever widening circle of growing inclusiveness of people. That's what we see at Pentecost. I've been thinking all week about that line in one of our in one of our um, professions of faith. Wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church. That is so very true. Wherever you see the Spirit at work, there is a convergence. There is a binding together in love, the love of Christ. And the Spirit of God is at work in our lives. But where you see the absence of unity... You are seeing the absence of the Spirit. And so what is God's dream? What is God's desire? It is indwelling. All through the Bible, from cover to cover, as I've said before, God is looking for a home. God is looking for a dwelling place. A people that He can claim as His own. God can claim as God's people. Where the Spirit of God will find this dwelling place among us and within us that will reverberate outward in ever-widening circles. Can that be us? Yes, if we open ourselves to the promise of Jesus and the reality of being filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is that promise, continuing presence of Christ. It is our helper, our teacher, the one who empowers us to live this life of extraordinary self-giving love. And so the Holy Spirit is looking for a dwelling place, a home. And God wants that home 
to be in us. And so when and where the Spirit is present, where there is an infilling, an indwelling, which is my hope and my prayer for each of us in our church as we seek to be the presence of God in this community in our own way, as we hope that and pray for that, that we need to pay attention to what the Holy Spirit does. I love the reading from Romans chapter 8. It talks about how the Spirit of God and selfishness are not compatible. That's as we open ourselves up to be a vessel of the Holy Spirit, as the Spirit becomes an indwelling presence, it pushes out our selfishness and fills us with the heart of God. And so listen again to what Romans 8 says. Anyone that does not have the Spirit of Christ does not truly belong to Him. How do you measure whether or not, how do you gauge whether or not we belong to Christ? We are acting out the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because the Spirit of God is in us and is driving our behavior, our attitudes, our relationships. And so the Spirit of Christ drives out of us this self-centeredness, this selfishness, and replaces it with this ever-flowing stream of God's love that is flowing outward. And so it says in verse 14 in Romans 8, All who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. And then it says in verse 16, The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that, yes, we are, spirit, we are children of of God. And so, wherever we see the Spirit of God at work, we see a convergence. We see an outpouring of God's love into the human heart to be shared. I pray that is happening here. And the more it happens, the more we are filled with the Spirit of Christ, the more that will reverberate outwardly and we will become the transforming presence in the world that God envisioned the church to be. But it can't just be our little circles of likeness. On Pentecost, all of those people came together and they were overwhelmed with the experience of even though they were different, they may have even been enemies, they all heard the gospel in their own languages, to their own understanding, and they were bound together in love and propelled into the world to share the heart of God. That's what the Spirit does. And so the Spirit enlarges our circles. One last thing in Brene Brown's book about belonging. She has four practices, and I won't share all of those, but one of the practices is move in closer, hold hands with strangers. The way that belonging, the way that community, the way that transformation happens in the world is where we cross our barrier or boundary of sameness and we move in closer with people who are not like us. And so she says one of the practices, and she verifies this with her data, one of the ways that community and unity are created is by moving in closer, particularly with people who are not like us. And she says, hold hands with strangers. I don't know if they held hands on Pentecost Sunday. But I do know the church was bound together in the Spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit. And so may that be true for us. Gosh, the world around us needs it so badly. We should be modeling unity. 
And when we do not model unity in the power of the Spirit, we need to question what is in us and motivating us because it is not the Spirit. And so my hope and my prayer always is that that Pentecost experience will not just be ancient history, it will be living history. And so it starts with each of us opening ourselves up to be a vessel of the Holy Spirit that pushes out our selfishness, that broadens our horizons, that makes us push out across boundaries and barriers to get closer to people, particularly people who are not like us, maybe even to hold hands with strangers, so that a collective effervescence might happen. It starts with us. Is the Spirit of God in you? Have you cooperated with the grace of God to the point that the Spirit of God is in you and is shaping you into a greater vessel of spirit and grace so that collectively our church will be the home of God? I pray for that every day in myself and in you. And so on this Pentecost Sunday, come Holy Spirit, come. I know we sang it once and I just sang it, but would you sing this little chorus, Spirit of the Living God, don't let me sing it alone again. Sing it with me. Let's sing it a cappella. Sing it with me. Spirit of the Living God, fall afresh on me spirit of the living god fall afresh on me melt me mold me fill me Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Amen. Well, as we close our service, there are many ways to respond to the word proclaimed. But I would pray, I would hope that you would pray this week to open your life up to become more and more a vessel of the very Spirit of God. The Spirit is always willing to fill us and shape us. And so that's your assignment, to pray that you would be more and more each day a vessel of the Spirit of God. If you are, are here this morning and would profess your faith in Christ, or if you would unite with this church family, we would invite you to share that decision with us today. Uh, the next step cards are there in the pew, and you, I would invite you to bring one of those to me today. Let's stand and sing a wonderful song. It's 347 Spirit Song. Let us stand and sing together.
Well, in just a few moments, we're going to gather in the CLC for a Sunday School Assembly. I hope that you'll gather with us. Thank you for being in worship today. Remember that prayer. Pray to God that the Spirit of God would fill you. Open yourself up to be a vessel. And as each of us are filled and collectively we are filled with the Spirit of God, we will be a transforming presence in our community and in ever-widening circles. Receive the benediction. And now all glory to God the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, three in one. Go now and live as children of God by the power of the Spirit of God alive and well in you. Go in peace. Amen.